Peace to the gods, peace to the earths. Sitting here with one of the young gods right here, you know, one of my young brothers, you know. How you doing today, brother? Pretty good, pretty good. Yes, pretty good, yes, pretty good. yes. I know you was uh, getting it in, doing some painting. Doing oh, yeah, a whole lot of painting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, that's what's up, man. So, uh, what's your name, brother? Uh, Mufasa. Mufasa. Yep, <laughs> like the Lion King. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true indeed, true indeed. I know we were talking about that, and, uh, you know, you was just telling me, you know, uh, your mom and them, you know, named you and stuff like that, yeah. and just some of the origins of that. But uh, real quick, brother, what do you uh, basically? What do you do? How old are you, and what are you doing? And where um, are you from? So I am um, 18. I'm from Houston. Um, part of what I do is I work for the Houston Public Libraries Community Engagement Team. So I do everything in the community from um, hosting large events, doing parades, festivals, doing basic outreach, teaching people about. Um, a lot of the resources that are in their community. The other thing I do is I'm a full-time artist. Mm -hmm. So in part, I teach art and art theory and art curriculum. Um, I'm a curriculum developer for um, reading and arts for 6th through 12th graders. Wow. And uh, I teach occasionally at a boarding school in Bessemer, Alabama, as well as I do art shows and sell work. Wow. And do commissions for the city of Houston. Uh, definitely, definitely. You you sound like a busy guy. Extremely busy. <laughs> extremely yeah, yeah, busy. You got a lot going on. More than what I was doing when I was 18. Yes, most people when they're 18, they're asleep at home. I'm, yeah, I'm lucky if yeah. I can get like an hour. Yeah, so, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, that's really good. I like to hear stuff like that, you yeah. know. Yeah, I have a daughter that's uh, about your age, too, but she just turned 19, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Halloween, you know, yeah. uh, one of my Halloween babies, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But um, definitely, man. But, um, yeah, you had some questions, though, you know, just about the 5%, because I was just saying, I know a lot of youth don't really know about mm -hmm. the five percenters and, yeah. you know, who we are and how instrumental we were in hip hop, you know, mm -hmm. and rap music and stuff like that, you yeah. know, from back during the late 70s on up until... Is, is like all in the 90s, even the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. But a lot of youth your age don't really know about who the five percenters are. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I know you had a couple of questions or whatever, you know, yeah. like if you wanted to, you know. Because I always find it interesting to learn about new, like, organizations and, like, different organizations that have been around right. in the black community. Um, most people don't even know that there's a sect of the Black Panthers, and then there's yeah. the new Black Panthers, and then there's Indeed. so many sects from that. So I just want to know what was, like, the Five Percenters. Well, the Five Percenters basically started in 1964, mm -hmm. you know, um, a brother by the name of Clarence Thirteen X, you mm -hmm. know, uh, in the Nation of Islam, he was a member uh, of Temple Number no. Seven mm -hmm. in Harlem, New York, which is where I'm originally from. You know, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, but yeah. you know, Harlem is like uptown. We call Mecca, Manhattan, yeah, the, the place where it all popped off. Yeah, but uh, he started in 1964 with youth that were like your age, actually mm -hmm. younger than you, that were like 12, 13, 14 years old. You know, and um. You know, basically, it came up simultaneously with the hip-hop era. Yeah. Because, like, from 64, you know, uh, Brother Clarence 13X, he only mm -hmm. stayed among us for a few years, and then in 69, his life was taken from him. Mm -hmm. You know, he was assassinated. He was, you know, shot oh, right. and killed. You know, um, after that, pretty much we stayed involved in the hip-hop because, mm -hmm. of course, it was youth that was in the streets. Yeah. So pretty much, but the teachings of the Nation of Islam were mm. like the rudimentary foundation yeah. or basis of that youth organization mm -hmm. during that time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you may see brothers on the corner, maybe drinking a beer or mm -hmm. smoking weed <laughs> yeah. or smoking a cigarette or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. They were still the same thing as the brothers who were in the mosque. Yeah. In the nation of Islam, who wear the suits and the bow ties. Mm -hmm. Only thing, these brothers were on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they were just indulging in things that brothers in the mosque may not have done. Mm -hmm. But as far as the teachings, mm -hmm. the teachings were, were the same teachings. It all came from the most humble Elijah Muhammad, yeah. who is, you know, the nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the five percent is this flag right here. I got it. I got this tat done when I was like 21, 22 years old mm -hmm. in um, prison or whatever. But, um, that flag, you know, Jay-Z and a few people were wearing that flag, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, which we call the universal flag yeah. of the five percenters, you know, um, 
it, its origin, of course, is the Nation of Islam flag, sun, yeah. moon, and stars, star and a crescent. But mm-hmm. this is just our, you know, version of version that. of it. Yeah. But it's still again the basis, the rudimentary basis of it. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, like I said, man, the Five Percenters was basically just a youth organization in 1964 started by, you know, uh, Brother Clarence 13X, who, you know, we call Father Allah. Yeah. You know, it, as Five Percenters, you know, or Allah the Father, you know, um, he was the founder of it. And there were other elders that were with him as well. Mm-hmm. But these brothers was like my age, you know, mm-hmm. late yeah. 30s, 40s, mid 40s, whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. But they were all youth. Yeah. Teenagers who were the members of that, you know, that group. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, that, you know, like I said, in short, there's a lot more, but in short, that's who, you know, we, you know, uh, really were. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've heard of Rakim? Uh, who's that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Rakim is, you know, uh, I came through the door. I said it before. I never let the That was win. probably made before I was born. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, yeah, it was way before. It was when I was a kid. Oh, you yeah, so I probably you know, never heard of yeah, it. Yeah, it was when I was a kid. But, you know, Rakim, mm-hmm. Big Daddy King. Oh, I know who that is. Uh, that is. Queen Latifah, no, or who is. they call Queen Latifah today. Yeah. But Queen Latifah, mm-hmm. uh... It's, 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 you know, it's, it's a lot of them. The Wu-Tang Clan, mm-hmm. some of those brothers, you know what I'm saying? A lot of rappers, you know, mm-hmm. you know, Nas, yeah. KRS-One, oh, wow. you know, I can go on and on and on, you know, back during the eighties that were teenagers at mm-hmm. the time, but they had this knowledge mm-hmm. that they were spitting, mm-hmm. you know, putting it out there, you know, for the youth to hear. And that's the era that I came up in yeah. where everybody had some sort of African Black power, whether it was black power or it was Islamic, mm-hmm. it was something that dealt with Africa mm-hmm. or our original, you know, where we came from, our ancestors. Yeah. You know, because like I mentioned before, as you know, when we came over here, our people were robbed of their name, language, culture, God, religion, everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we had to regain that. Yeah. And during the 80s era, that was a wild era. Yeah. True, you know, yeah. the crack. The, you know, on the streets. Yeah, crack, AIDS, all that AIDS, stuff. AIDS, yeah. you know, and all of these things were targeted at the black man and the black yeah. woman, you know, of the black community. So, you know, while our people were partying, some of the ones who made that money, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and who, you know, were so-called successful and yeah, they tried to get your minds off of the, the struggle. Mm-hmm. And just pop champagne and yeah, because it's uh, it's sales. Yeah, you, you know, let's sales. get some hoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pop bottles. Nigga. Yeah, get night, nigga. Ah, all that knowledge. Ah. Yeah, but then you had the guards over there that was like, brother. Ever since they brought our ancestors over here, the war has never stopped. Yeah, yeah. we're still at war, and right now they're trying to completely exterminate our people. Yeah, by putting true. crack. Cocaine, drugs, AIDS, and stuff like that in the black. Mm-hmm. They're really trying to exterminate us now. Yeah. So there was always that 5% mm-hmm. who know who the true and living God is and that taught that mm-hmm. the true and living God was you, mm-hmm. the God within yourself that you got to, as you get knowledge of what's going on in your environment and mm-hmm. what this enemy is trying to do to you, yeah. you're supposed to be trying to live right and come up out of this thing, you know, spiritually. You know, that's that's the African concept, spiritually. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what we're fighting—a spiritual war. Yeah, because yeah. I think it's interesting. It kind of takes a step back to like different positive religious and spiritual Africanisms that we carried over, mm-hmm. with you know, through you know slavery and all of that. Yes, sir. And I think it's—I think it's interesting. There's a lot of different groups that take steps to go back to those African Africanisms that are more so talking about self and like centering yourself and figuring out your place in the world and the universe. Yes, I think that's really interesting. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. I mean, the thing about it is, you know, the Nation of Islam, when we first started back in 1930, mm-hmm. you know, this is the predecessor now of the five percenters. Again, yeah. the Nation of Islam is where it came from. Mm-hmm. People called us a voodoo movement or a voodoo cult. This was this was a rumor that was started by the Detroit Police Department. You mm-hmm. can go look it up. This is, mm-hmm. you know, public information. But, you know, because we're... At the end of the day, I guess you could say I'm an occultist because mm-hmm. that's what a five percenter is. That's what any enlightened person who's seeking knowledge of themselves. Yeah. This is what we're called, occultists. Yeah. You know, it, you know what I'm saying? I don't call myself that, but if you want to call me that, cool. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm just a Muslim. That's yeah. it. You know, I'm striving to live 
it's like you a know, as a righteous though. individual. Yeah. So yeah. I'm a Muslim, but I teach that I'm a Muslim and I'm a God. Yeah. Because the God in myself is what's... That's the potential. Mm-hmm. See, we teach that we're all born Muslims mm-hmm. because a Muslim is only one who's striving to live according to those universal laws mm-hmm. and principles of mind and all of those African, you know, that's what a Muslim is. One who's uh, uh, grounded, if you will, like a ground wire or cable. Mm-hmm. He's We live according to that because we are that. We're connected to the universe. Yeah. You know, they looked at the nation of Islam as teaching... Uh, some you know weird, <laughs> crazy, like, yeah, weird thing. you know because niggas was changing in yeah, the hood. they yeah. stopped eating they stopped eating pulp yeah <laughs> they stopped chasing white women yeah. you know they stopped gambling they stopped doing whatever you yeah. know and the messenger the most humble Elijah Muhammad was the most successful yeah if you look all through the annals of history mm-hmm. as it, during our sur- surgery in, in America he was the most successful at cleaning our people up yeah. from that type of lifestyle you know, Marcus Garvey came, Noble Jew Ali. There's many other great men, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but he was, you know, uh, at the upper echelon oh, yeah. of, of those who, you know what I'm saying, had an idea mm-hmm. that, you know, fixed our condition. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, people called us all kind of things, as they do today. You know, oh, you guys, are, you know, my mother, when I told my mother, you know, I don't believe in that Jesus you talking about in the Bible and, you know, and this and that. Yeah. You, know, I, you know, I'm Jesus. You know, mm-hmm. she was like. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's what Jesus is. But yeah. It's an allegory of you yeah. and your people. Your people, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, is Jesus, the black nation mm-hmm. that was dead in the tomb of ignorance for three days or 300 years. And then mm-hmm. he rose again on the third day. Mm-hmm. And then he got the knowledge of himself. And then he yeah. became one with God. This is what we teach. It's only a, Jesus is an allegory of you and your people. Yeah. See how easy that is? Yeah. You know, but in church they make it, you know. <laughs> yeah, they say, yeah. <laughs> kind of like take it to different places. Like, yeah. oh, I don't know if it should go there. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, but yeah, it's, it's simple mathematics at the end of the day, you know. So the 5%, you know, basically uh, we are uh, few yeah. Or, you know, out of this population of people on the planet, as I mentioned, I think I was explaining it earlier, where you have 100% of people, you got 10% who know the truth, but they hide the truth. Yeah. And they use the knowledge that they have for their own personal gain, okay. you know, to try to deceive the 85%, mm-hmm. the masses who don't know, yeah. they use the, what they know to deceive them, mm. you know, yeah. devils. Basically, yeah. this could be black people. This could be white people. The five percent don't have nothing to do with race. Mm. I'm talking about black people. I'm talking about white people. I'm talking <laughs> about Chinese. And everybody. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know. But the five percent, the five percent are the poor, righteous teachers mm-hmm. who teach that the true God is the God of yourself. Yeah. That's the God within you, the God potential. I like to call it the God potential. Yeah. You know, because as Muslims, you know, we always humble ourselves. You don't never make yourself out to, I'm the supreme God of law of the whole universe. And then, <laughs> well, I mean, technically you are, but at the end of the day, there's a process of growth and development that we have to learn. Yeah. Your mother didn't tell you certain things when you were eight years old, and then, you know, she went to you as a man, and then she kind of explained that to you. Yeah. You know, because back then you wouldn't have grasped, mm. you know, what she was saying. Yeah. Same thing in school. You don't start college and get stuff that seniors are getting yeah. you just come. like just jumped in yeah. yeah you know what i'm saying so in all spheres of learning this is how knowledge is like taught. developed yeah. yeah you know to people you know what i'm saying so but yeah bro like i said man we could build you know i could do this forever you know yeah. but like i said you know just wanted to get your quick little bill you know yeah. so that way you know what i'm saying we can definitely you know uh Keep in contact and you know build some more in the future cool, bro. cool you know yeah. at the end of the day it's all about the youth yeah True, 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 true. The baby, the, you know, the the, 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 the father, you mm-hmm. know, uh, uh, said to us, Brother mm-hmm. Clarence 13 next, he said, the babies are the greatest. Yeah. Nothing is greater than the children. And that uh, pretty much is akin to what Jesus said in the scriptures. He oh, said yeah. the, the, the youth, for in them is the kingdom of, of, of God yeah. or the kingdom of heaven in some translations. Mm-hmm. Blessed ye are the children, for in them is the kingdom of heaven. So that's the idea. What I'm telling you or whatever knowledge you, you know, acquire mm-hmm. during your lifetime, it's to teach the youth. Yeah. 
you know, those that are teenagers mm -hmm. because we see what the devil is teaching them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. What the, what the devil teaching y'all? Everything about hoes, <laughs> drinking, anything, <laughs> anything crazy, really. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah, that's what it's all about, man. But at the end of the day, man. It was good talking with you, brother. It was good talking to you, definitely, too. I learned definitely. a lot. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. Anything you want to say, you know, before we go, tell people where they can find you at. If you got any social media sites or anything, you know, uh, whatever. Um, If you are in Houston, keep um, a, a lookout for some of my art. They're really crazy murals and things like that. You should be seeing them everywhere, basically. And my Instagram is Roar Goes Mufasa because it's a little play on my name being from the Lion King. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. True indeed, true indeed. No doubt, no doubt. Well, yo, definitely, man. It's been a pleasure building with you. Yo, it's Day Son to God, a.k.a. Brother Fahim, back again with the Young God. We're going to see y'all in the future. Peace to the gods, peace to the earths, and all of the righteous families of the planet. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>